Um, my name is Roger Germanson, and I'm going to give you a whirlwind tour of what we have for geometric computation. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the fundamental idea around geometry right now is that of a region. A region you can think of as a point set. And there are many ways in which you can specify regions, and we'll see there are many ways in which you can use them. One group of regions are basic regions. For those of you who have been using Mathematica, a good start is to remember essentially all the graphics primitives are also in themselves geometric regions. Um, but we've also doubled, um, effectively doubled the number of primitives. So examples of new primitives are infinite primitives like a half line or a ray or an infinite line. Um, there are also things that, uh, you know, things come up in high school like a side, side, side triangle. Um, and you'll find uh, many more things in 3D like infinite planes and uh, simplices and so on. Some of these special regions can also be extended to any number of dimensions. You know, that includes dimension one and it includes dimension four and, and higher. So that's an important and very convenient way to specify regions when they work. Now another little bit more general way to specify regions is to use a formula. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'll show one here today. One is that if you've been using Mathematica before, you've seen that we can use implicit conditions. So this represents all the points where the, you know, the sum of squares is between one and two. And I can use that to specify a region. And let's look what that looks like. That's an annulus. Just to show that it actually can work as a region, I'll use a sort of a hello world kind of operation here, like integrating over that region, which should give you the area, which also happens to be pi here, actually. Um, here's a 3D one, and you can use these formula regions in any number of dimensions. This is what it looks like, and then let's just try to use it for something like a hello world type of operation. And there is an exact formula for that volume um, of the shape that we're looking at. A third very important type of region is mesh-based regions, and they're really uh, two kinds, but I'll be looking at one of them here today. Um, they're very flexible. They can be used to approximate essentially any other bounded region. And um, so it, for those of you who are familiar with our graphics language, we have something called a graphics complex, and it uses um, a list of coordinates. And then you can use cells or primitives to refer to those coordinates. So this refers to the first coordinate, this one here, and the second, the number two here refers to the second coordinates and so on. And that is, uh, and I'm also using a, a particular labeling feature here so we can see how that plays out. So this is the union of two triangles. Uh, typically you have many, many of these, like thousands or millions. Let's just integrate over that thing and we can see it comes out to one, which is kind of, sounds, looks reasonable. We can do that in, in other dimensions too. Here is a 3D example where we have points and we, the cells are tetrahedra. And this, in this case, I'm putting together two tetrahedra. And we can do the example of um, integrating over that thing. Typically, you don't build up um, mesh regions that way. That's very flexible to, um, to do. Um, and, it, and there are plenty of examples that shows many ways to do that. But there are also many functions that in themselves generate regions. So this one, from a list of random points, it will compute the Delaunay mesh. So this is a collection of tetrahedra that fit snugly together, and they represent the Delaunay triangulation of that point set. There are many more. There's Voronoi mesh, there's convex hull mesh, discretized region, and so on. So there's a variety of ways to create these. Finally, we have what's what we call derived regions. So a derived region is one that's built from other regions. So a typical thing that you might think of is that you create Boolean combinations of regions. So I'm using um, four examples here, a union, a in section, a difference, and a symmetric difference of, in this case, very simple regions. And this is what they look like. In general, you can compute any Boolean functions of regions. So some of these will automatically evaluate to create a new region. So that's what will happen for these mesh regions that we just looked like. For other ones, it will stay unevaluated, but it still represents the union or the intersection and so on of that region, and you can still compute with it. Now, let's take um, you know, another way that you can derive a new region is to transform 
an existing region. So I'm just, um, here's the four um, examples of affine transformations. And so here is what comes out as the transformed regions. And there's, a, there's, there's more, and you can do nonlinear transformations of regions and so on. But this gives you a, a sense of, of flavor. Now, so those are four groups of regions, if you like. So what can you do with them? Well, there's one kind of thing, which is standard properties that you can compute um, from them. And I'll showcase a few here. Um, there are many more. One is to compute the measure. You know, and so measures have special names. You know, if it's zero dimensional, it's usually called a count. If it's a one dimensional thing, like a curve, we usually call it length. And if it's a, if it's a two dimensional thing, we usually call it area. So let's do some examples here. So the arc length of a circle luckily comes out to two pi. We can use a formula region like we did before. And this is, um, this is an ellipse or this is a, 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 a curve. Um, it's not a manifold curve, but it's nevertheless just a curve. Um, we can compute that. Um, disk as a primitive um, comes out to pi, and this is a mesh region. Uh, we can do 3D example. Here's the volume of a ball. We recognize that, and here's a mesh region, and so on. All of these things are special cases of, of region measure. So even though they have special names in certain dimensions, but you will want to use region measure when you go to any number of dimensions. So sphere n means the n-dimensional sphere, or sp strictly speaking, the sphere that lives in dimension n. Um, so that is the measure of all those spheres. And we can even go farther and combine with other functionality in Mathematica and figure out what the general formula is. So here is the general formula for the, um, the measure of a sphere in dimension n. OK, centroid. Centroid is a way to give the, the central location of a region. So if a disk, you know, x, y, as you might expect, one thing that's kind of confusing is the centroid may in fact not be in the region. So here's a non-convex region and the centroid lies outside. But again, we can compute it for all the things that you saw me use before. And here is a, an example data set. It's the Stanford Bunny. Um, another important property is to find the nearest point um, so Chris earlier gave an example with Italy. Um, I'm going to give some examples to give formulas here. And so for a, for a disk, the nearest point is, you know, if you're in the disk, it's the point itself. Otherwise, you just sort of project on the boundary. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated. You know, here's for a triangle. And, um, and in general, th these things work out, you know, for, is, works for all of them. One thing that's interesting is that if you don't give it an actual point, so here I gave x, y, and I get a formula out. If I don't give it an argument, it will give me a Regis nearest function, which is an optimized representation that you can apply repeatedly if you need to do this test many, many times. So you spend the time up front to compute what this function is, and then you can use it inexpensively, like in this case. Um, closely related to nearest is distance. So what is the distance between the point that I'm giving it and uh, the point that's nearest? So here's a, um, the same principle applies to distance, that if I don't give it an argument, it will give me one of these functions that I can apply repeatedly. And so um, let's, let's do that. Let's apply it repeatedly and find out what are the equal distance curves from a triangle. So these are the the equal distance curves, and then we can do the same in 3D, and we get equal distance surfaces in a similar fashion. Okay, so now the fourth group of things I wanted to talk about is the integration with solvers in Mathematica. So we've already seen a bunch of things because I used it as the sort of a hello world example. So you can integrate numerically and symbolically over regions. So one thing that's interesting about integration, in this case, I'm giving it, it's a curve in 2D. So it's a one-dimensional region. It will then automatically, in fact, do the curve integral. So in this case, I have parameters. So it's a symbolic integrate. I get a symbolic result. Um, disk is two-dimensional, so I'm doing actually the full volume integral, the 2D integral. Or ball, ball is filled, so it's a solid integral. So this comes out as the volume. But again, we can integrate there over absolutely anything. This is a complicated curve. Um, or, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter, any, any type of region. Here is a, one of my favorites, which has little tunnels going in every which direction, um, but never crossing. 
that's integration. We can also solve partial differential equations. So here's a simple Poisson equation uh, with, with uh, very simple Dirichlet conditions at the, at the boundary, so the, over a disk. And if we, we get an interpolating function out, and if we plot that solution, that's the solution. But we can give it an arbitrarily complicated region. And so here I uh, took the font outline and made that the region. And so now let's solve the same equation, but over that Wolfram region. And let's plot the solution. It's going to take longer to plot the solution than to find the solu you know, solution. So here's the Poisson equation over the Wolfram font outline. Optimization. Well, you can use this idiom of saying points are in a region to optimize over a region. So here I want to find the minimizing point for that uh, function over a disk. So this one will compute it um, symbolically and exactly. And so let's visualize what that might look like. So here we have the disk, and here we have level sets for that function that I was optimizing. And here is the um, minimum point in the center and the maximum point at the boundary. Let's do another example. So here are two regions, a disk and a rectangle. And I want to find the minimum distance between points in the disk and points in the rectangle. And I find those. And I want to find the maximum distance between points in the disk and the rectangle. And then we can visualize those. So here you see the maximum distance and the shortest distance. There are many, many more examples like this um, in the documentation and the marketing pages. Finally, another group of solvers. So um, for optimization, perhaps I should say that all 18 optimization function works just fine for this. I, I showcase a few here. Um, so here's an example of using region constraints in equation solving. So I want to find the points where that lie on a line, on a first line, and a second line. Those intersect in only one point, so let's visualize that solution. So that finds us where these guys um, intersect. But I can pick any region. So here I pick a, a line and a circle. And here I use another feature, which is new, which is symbolic vector variables. So you see, before I used components. Now I use just one symbol, P, for the point. And these guys cross at two, two spots. Okay, so let's visualize that solution. And you can see where they do, and then you can see how this goes. So I'll just do one more example, which is to take three surfaces and find the points that are in all three surfaces, which is where they intersect. So if we visualize that solution, it comes out to something like this. All right, that was a whirlwind tour, and here is where you can learn a lot more about uh, geometric computation in Mathematica. So there are marketing pages um, for geometry. There's three main marketing pages, and the PDEs and finite elements is, is effectively one as well. There are also plenty of guide pages that are great starting points in the uh, documentation. Um, the geometric computation is a general overview. There are two specialized intros, plane geometry and solid geometry. And the other one, drill into the areas that I've been talking about here, like the properties, the solvers, basic mesh region, derived regions.